So hello there, so my name is Rachel and I'm an artist and illustrator and welcome to the third live workshop in the Bout Art School online series. Um, so today we're going to be exploring storytelling through photography. Um, so feel free to just watch along this morning or get involved um, and make along as, we're, as you're at home as well. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, um, please do put those at the bottom. Um, yeah, because it'd be great to hear how you're getting along as well. Um, so let's get started. So all of these workshops are inspired by the same artwork, which is why they're called Bouts Art School. And that's this painting here by artist Dirk Bouts. Um, so this painting is called St Luke during the Virgin and Child. Um, and today's session is all about storytelling. So we're going to be looking at this artwork and analysing some of the features um, and the visual features used in the painting to try and work out maybe the story behind it and then use some of those ideas in our own um, photographs that we're going to be taking as well. So there's lots of different ways of analysing an artwork. Um, so we can look at the background and the environment. We can look at some of the architecture and the objects used. Um, we can see uh, different colours and whether all these uh, features combined convey a kind of mood, maybe of like luxury or peacefulness. Um, and if there's anything else that sort of is a symbol for the story as well. So those are lots of different ideas, um, but maybe let's take a closer look. So if I just hold this for a moment a bit closer to the screen, then you can have a quick look at the painting as well and maybe think about some of those features, look in the background, look at the colours, and then I'll bring it back. So you can have a closer look. There we go. So when I was looking at this, painting and analysing its different features, the main thing that stood out to me was all the different colours used in the artwork. So we've got these like nice pink, uh, bright pinks and reds, we've got the bright green and the blue as well. Um, and knowing that this artwork was made um, between 1470, 1480, it's sort of like we know that at the time artists would have had to create their own paint from pigments. Um, so especially colours like blue were really expensive, made from um, a stone called azurite. So knowing that, I don't know, that all these um, paints, are, paint colours have been used um, gives that feeling of like wealth or luxury, that this might be a luxury item or something like that. Um, if you don't, you know, maybe we don't know that um, artists have to make their own paint, but at the same time, when you look at lots of different features in this painting, things like the columns at the back made from marble, that's expensive still today, um, this sort of fabric behind the virgin figure, which looks like a, look like a rich silk or something like that, all of these things still look quite expensive today and give that real feeling of um, wealth basically. Another thing I noticed in this picture was the body language. So when you look at these two figures here, St Luke and the Virgin and Child, St Luke is crouching down in front of the Virgin and you know what does that sort of symbolise? So that must mean that she's much more important, so he's crouching down and sort of showing her respect as well. Um, so it's that feeling that maybe it's not just like a wealth in terms of money, this, you know, this painting looks very luxurious, but also a wealth in terms of his faith or, um, you know, faith and religion uh, as well. Also when you, um, I quite like looking through these windows here, these like very symmetrical archways, and also we've got the symmetry and the tiles there, so it's that feeling of like, harmony and calm and stillness and their expressions as well are incredibly still um, so yeah so I don't know all these features combined and I think when we look at an artwork and spend a little bit more time looking and analyzing we can really see what the artist or creative has used um, to sort of convey a story so yeah, so basically artists and creators across centuries still use pretty much the same techniques 
um, in creating their, their pieces to make them more interesting and to try and add a little bit extra narrative um, to their work. So I've got some other examples to show you that are a bit more contemporary. So I had a look on my bookshelf um, and through some magazines as well. So this is a cookbook. So maybe some of you have got um, a cookbook to hand at home that you can also have a look in and see if you can analyse some of the images. So this is, I've chosen this one because it's used for photography. So this is an Anna Jones cookbook. Um, and I'm just going to show you this image here and then we can start to analyse it together. So if you've noticed anything as well from this um, image, you can pop that in the comments and see. Okay. So first of all, it looks really delicious. So this is um, a bowl of popcorn. Um, so it's been photographed from above um, so that we can really see the like texture of the popcorn and all the different colors of the spices that have been put on top because this is spice, salt, caramel popcorn. Um, yeah, I know, I've got a nice comment here, yummy popcorn, I know, it does look yummy. And that's the point, you know, it's, the photographer has included this, uh, well, included this photo in the in the book because it makes it look delicious. And of course, that's the point of this image. But also, when do we normally have popcorn? So we'd probably have that like on the sofa at home. And the fact that you can see some of the popcorn has been spilt around the edge, it really gives that sense of like homeliness and um, relaxation but also you can really see the different the texture of it as well so it does look really delicious so you know we're sort of thinking about how each artwork each image is composed and there's a lot of you know thought gone into actually the final thing so i've got another one to show you now so this is another contemporary example so from a magazine so this is a magazine about different um, products so this one's focusing on windows uh, and then this is a, a photograph here so you can see that I'll hold it in front again for a moment so you can see what you think about this photograph okay so uh, has anyone you know clearly worked out what the object is in this photograph it is in fact a sponge so an everyday sponge um, but what I really liked about this image is that the story that it, this is telling of this sponge is something that it's like much more precious so it's upright it's not being used as a sponge but also it sort of almost looks like a sculpture or something like that like the sponge has become this modernist British modernist sculpture by something like somebody like Henry Moore or Barbara Hepworth it's got that shape to it um, but also the sponge really complements the the texture of the concrete behind but it's sort of playing with this idea of um, that the concrete's very hard and the, of course the sponge is very soft so it's that real juxtaposition two objects are you know next to one another and what that does to um, the viewers eyes and the viewers like story behind it as well Oh, and also there's a very shiny surface at the bottom, so it's all in contrast there. I've just got one more example to show you. So this is from a fashion magazine, actually from last year, but I do tend to hoard magazines because you never know when they're going to come in hand or handy. Ah, someone's put a great comment here, material mimicry, exactly. So it's sort of that sponge and the concrete really, you know, it's like playing with that idea. It's quite a playful photograph. So I wanted to show you this one, because this one, again, has a sense of humour in it. I think it does. Um, that there. So the tagline on this is, the most covetable accessories this season have a classical appeal. I mean, don't they? So yeah, I was quite interested in this series of photographs. I'll show you another one there. And show you one more. Okay, great. So if you're just joining us, we're looking at some examples of um, how different photographers and creative people have used storytelling in their images. So I was showing this example here 
because it's a really interesting mix of having this uh, super fancy handbag, which costs two and a half thousand, with this Greek sculpture or Grecian style sculpture. So it's that mix of feeling like, why are these two objects put together? And as a viewer, when we look at an image like this, we're always making connections. So this is, you know, it's product styling, it's product advertising to try and give us a story. And I think that the story that's being told here is that these bags are like timeless. You know, they're absolutely classic items. They might have even been around, you know, the design is that good that would have been around in like Greek times or something like that. So you can really think about how um, different artists use these techniques to give us an impression and to tell a kind of story. Um, so we're going to be doing that today. I'm going to take you through um, things that we'll need for this um, session. But, you know, as I say, you can feel free to just watch along um, today and then have a go later. Um, and also you can, this recording will go onto this Instagram page and then soon onto the website as well. So things you're going to need for storytelling through photography, a range of your own objects. So of course we can't have the same objects. Ooh, I've got a full basket here of different objects. Um, but you know, have a look around you and I'll give you some more tips as well about how to maybe choose your different objects. Um, most importantly also we're going to need a phone or a camera phone, so I've got one here um, that I can use for taking pictures. It doesn't have to be anything fancy but obviously I can just use the camera button there and still have a go at taking different photos. And then the third thing is a background. So I've got a couple of um, different fabrics here, but if you don't have any fabric, you could use um, you know, some clothes with nice patterns on them or something, or if you've got some colored paper, so I've got this nice colored paper pad here that'll work really well as well as a background. But I've also, you know, I've got my desk because I'm gonna be set up my desk. So if I want a background of wood, I can use that too. So it's just about that we can change things up so we have different options. So again, just to go over those three main things, a camera or a phone camera, your selection of objects, and some things which could become a background. So fabric or paper works really, really well. And then some extra bits, which are the sort of like behind the scenes photography things which might come in handy. So if I want to change the lighting in my photo, it'd be good to have another light source. So that might be something like a torch. Um, also some elastic bands could come in handy. And if you've got a sweet tooth like me, something like sweet wrappers, um, which we can use with our torch to sort of combine to create a different filter um, for our photographs. Um, other things are uh, sticky tack. So this is, yeah, sticky tack here so that we might be able to stick things down a different way up, something like that, so you can stick that to the desk. And maybe some masking tape as well could come in handy. So that's nice too. Okay, so those are all the bits that we're gonna need for this and some extras. Um, first step is gathering your objects. Um, so maybe have a look around you, your surroundings. Uh, if you're, you know, you really don't know where to start, potentially just pick one thing, something that's uh, you're interested in or you've got, you feel is a bit more precious to you, so you could tell a kind of story around that item. So I collect shells. So yeah, maybe something that you collect as well, because then that's, you've clearly got an interest there. So some of them are more precious than others, um, but I really like shells. Um, and the look of them and that sort of natural feeling to them as well. So this one's um, even inscribed, so it says Boracay, which is in the Philippines. Um, so maybe start with an object like that and then think, can I find something the same colour as this? Just a range of objects the same colour? Or could it be a bit like um, the photograph I showed you of the sponge against the concrete? Could it be like an everyday object? which would actually enhance um, an object like this. Could it have the same texture or pattern? So could it also be spotty, something like that? Um, so really have a look around you and pick out some objects to start with and to play with. Um, your background might relate 
to your object somehow. So let's say if I only had red paper and then I was positioning red objects on top of that paper, obviously that's a very different story to if I have yellow paper and sort of the contrast of those two colours together. Um, so again, you can think about that. Um, I'm going to get started with one composition and um, but if anyone's making along today, please do share how you're getting along. It'd be great to hear. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get started. I'm going to think about um, working with my shell and so the shell sort of, you know, obviously it's something from the sea. So maybe my background could be a blue colour. I mean, it's a classic, isn't it? So I've been, I've been experimenting before this as well. And there was a composition that I quite liked when I was playing around because I used the shell and I do need to stick it down with a sticky tack because it's rolling everywhere. Um, and then I was looking around for some sort of object to complement the shell. So that was my starting point. And then I thought, um, what could complement that? And then I saw this. So this is just some fruit net <laughs> that I got. Um, and it just really reminded me of like fishing nets. So I felt like that could be an interesting object to contrast with the shell. But then also, of course, what was inside that fruit net was a lemon. And it's these, it's sort of this playful connection that you can have between different objects to tell a kind of your own story, your interesting story there. So maybe I'll put some more shells down though to create a bit more of a scene. So your objects don't have to be very large, but of course, um, because I'm just working on my desk today, I knew that everything had to fit within this, within this size, and that's fine. Okay, and then maybe you could even think about, could some of your objects stack together? Could you put them inside one another or anything like that? Could I have shells in shells, something like this? Um, oh, and then also, again, like an everyday object. So this is some string, but this string's got a very nice texture to it. So it's sort of evocative of, um, you know, ropes that you might see on ships to like haul ships in but of course that's not really going to do that's not going to do the job but it just in your own mind it creates these connections and i'm just going to take my phone and just because i don't want to get any of the desk behind i can't bring my phone too low down but i'm just going to start taking some photos to start with and playing around with what our composition so that's the first one. Okay. Um, maybe I want to take a little bit close up to get a sense of some of these textures next to one another. A sort of very large lemon. So maybe that's dominating my photograph there a little bit. Um, we were talking about changing the lighting. So if I'm going for this underwater theme, I might want to play around with the lighting that I'm using. So I'm going to put on a sweet wrapper around the end there and just use an elastic band to wrap around that. Turn the light on. So we can start to play around with creating a different look to our objects. More mysterious underwater. Thing. And maybe, you know, maybe I would like close the curtains or the blinds, have a go with that. Okay, so it's all about just being experimental and playing with different things. Um, there. Nice, so that's just one idea. Um, but I mean, really, I'd probably spend a bit more time uh, laying things out and just having a go and playing with things. Um, if you, you know, this is coming out on Instagram, but if you've been on Instagram and seen lots of different images, these beautiful images of like composed objects, you sort of wonder how long maybe someone has spent composing that object, but also what is going around on uh, around out of the frame as well. So we don't know, so it could look 
very messy like my desk now or it could be you know super polished I don't know as well so we could think about um how to organize our objects themselves I'm gonna try something else now so I'm gonna use a different color background and think about creating more of a structure so this is uh, this painting here that we were taking inspiration from as well has this harmony and this sense of like line almost like a grid going across the bottom with the floor tiles so I'm now gonna use a selection of objects that I gathered which are all the same color so all of these objects are a red color and to tie in with this feeling of structuring it I'm gonna sort of create if I can if I've got enough objects a kind of grid for them so ooh. so I feel like this net maybe is a bit too messy looking I don't think that's gonna look as nice maybe space that out a little bit have some guys with the taking photo again so I think it's better to have more photos so that you can really have a go, get a sense of what you like and what you don't like as well. Um, I think maybe that's a bit too red and I haven't got any more red objects so I'm going to add in something else. So again it's sort of playing, having a look around, seeing if you've got anything that you could sort of domestic items that you can change around to become a bit more interesting. So I've got these cotton buds here um, which I think just look add something a bit more like a frame structure to this let's see yeah so i think i prefer that that one there with the cotton buds i don't know if you can see it's quite light actually looks a bit better okay so maybe let's have a go with something else i'm just going to whiz through these things so that we can have a play in different things um, but of course you've got your own objects so you can really look at them and think what sort of story is this going to tell your own object okay and then so I actually gathered some sponges like our thinking about our sponge on the concrete and um, like thought about a material that could contrast to the softness of this sponge and that is maybe something like metal so we could start to position different things different materials next to one another i've chosen a bright green background because i think then the, it really stands out uh, the color of the sponge against that and again just having a play just having a go. Maybe crisscrossing, stacking some items, balancing them on top of one another, any sort of thing. So you can really just, you know, take your time to have a look at your own objects and think, um, how can I make this more interesting? You know, how can I uh, elevate this? How can I make this look really precious? How can I make it look really um, I don't know, funny, could you add humour to your object somehow? Like I feel like, yeah, putting these uh, sponges next to the the spoons, it sort of was like, are you going to eat this? Not really. So it's like that contrast of different materials, um, different things that you can just, you know, have a go with and, and see what you think about. So, um, yeah, so unless anyone has got any questions, um, that's pretty much the the activity and a good starting point I think about how you can um, think about your own photographs and how you can um, really develop those to um, sort of yeah give a bit more narrative in them so I hope you've enjoyed the session we've actually got 10 creativity packs to give away to young people aged 13 to 25 um, which contain all the extra behind the scenes materials for this activity so that's like some acetate coloured acetate and a torch and some nice like coloured masking tape and things uh, and a set of guidelines to how to sort of create your um, photographs with objects um, so we'd love to know your feedback from the, today's workshop and we'll send you one of the creativity packs uh, if you complete an evaluation um, so we've got 10 of those to give away so if you 
do want to create uh, give us um, some feedback on the evaluation that'd be great so you just head to the Bose Museum website click learn and then young people and then about art school and then you scroll down to week three and then you can download the evaluation form from there so the uh, this video will be available on this Instagram page the, on the Bose Museum Instagram page and soon on the website as well but also if you prefer just to read a, a set of instructions there's the PDF that's available too um, if you'd like to share any of your photographs with us that'd be really great to see and um, so please tag us on social media hashtag Bouts Art School so that's B-O-U-T-S um, so next week's workshop is at the same time and that's called, that's Unfiltered Views with artist Ginny Johnston so thank you so much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed it and um, yeah I hope to see some of your photographs soon that'd be great Okay, bye.